Let's cover some of the important syntax guidelines of PHP. First, let's discuss code commenting. Code comments are usually used to remind yourself and others about what a script is doing and where it is doing it. Sometimes you'll see people putting copyright information in scripts using code comments. So to create a single line code comment, we can use the pound sign or double forward slashes. To make a multi-line comment in PHP, we use forward slash star and then you can put a couple of spaces and then another star and forward slash and that closes that multi-line comment. So that allows me to move this down and put as many lines of comments as I would like in here. So that's what multi-line comments look like. Now we'll discuss the rules about variable naming. In PHP, standard variables always begin with a dollar sign. And as a good rule of thumb, you use only alphanumeric characters and underscores. So you can make a variable, for instance, named name1. And then we can make that equal to a value of Adam. Now what you're not allowed to do is use a number as the first character in your variable name. See, if I put a 6 there, you'll see I get a syntax error because that's not allowed. You cannot use a number to start your variable names or your function names. So if I name this var1, that's a good way to also describe it to myself. You would want to make your variables have a name that describes what its purpose is or what kind of information it holds. And so this is the sequence that you really only want to use within your variable names. Alphanumeric characters, A through Z and 0 through 9, and underscores. Now sometimes you might see a variable, for instance, that looks like this. It'll have two dollar signs on the front. Let's say that variable name was x. In that case, this variable that you see here is being dynamically named using this string. If I change this to Corey, and then I echo Adam. So you see, I'm echoing a variable that hasn't even been created here in the variable side. But you can see that this variable is going to hold a string of Adam. And then we can put that variable right on the front of another dollar sign to make this variable therefore named Adam, dynamically. It will echo out Corey. So sometimes you might come across a script where you see two dollar signs stacked right upon each other like that. Okay, now let's talk about this semicolon that you see trailing almost every line of code. The semicolon terminates lines and statements. So, for instance, if I was to remove this semicolon, you'd see I get a syntax error because I have a whole nother line of code in place and this one has not been terminated yet. So I have to have that semicolon in place to let PHP know that I intend to stop that line right there and there's no more processing for that particular line. But if I remove the last one and it's the last line of code within the script, I'll have no problems at all. But you just want to keep your semicolons there for all of your lines that you intend to terminate. Now you could also do something like this to where the semicolon is down here or even way down here. But just as long as there's nothing in between it. And what will happen is PHP will keep processing until it hits a semicolon. And that way it knows to stop processing that line or that certain bit of logic. And then go on to the next line and begin processing. PHP is also case sensitive, meaning that if this variable was named var and this one had a capital V in its name, they would be two separate variables or two separate string objects. Now let's talk about string concatenation and joining string data. And if you're used to working in JavaScript, you'd know that's done with the plus symbol. In PHP, it's done with the period. So let's put an echo statement in place to output some content to the browser. And strings always go in between quote marks. And you can use double quotes or single quotes. If I want to use single quotes here, that's just fine. Or double quotes works also. So I'll type in the user name is space. And then outside of my double quotes, I'm going to put a period. And then I'm going to take this first name variable and I'm going to put it next to that period. And that will append the value of Adam to that string or concatenate. And then if I want to continue, I just put another period and then continue my string. Comma, the surname is space. And then I can just put in the other variable, last name. So the output of that will be the username is Adam. The surname, actually it'll make more sense if you put, the first name is Adam, the surname is Corey. And it also works that way with the period if you want to compound variables. 
For instance, if I start a variable called list, and I make that equal to a value of, say for instance, HTML, and then I put a break tag in there to make a new line, what I can do is take that variable, and right under it, all I have to do is put dot equals, and that will compound or append to that same variable, and I can put CSS right here. And you can continue on, and as long as you have a dot before the equal sign, this list variable will contain all of these things. That way when you echo the list variable, the user will see a big list of items or a whole bunch of data that you wanted to compound and append into the original list variable. Now let's talk about escaping characters with the backslash. And in most instances, when working with strings and variables especially, you would use backslash to escape the quote marks that you want to display in the string when they're encapsulated by the same kind of quote mark. So let me show you what I mean. Let's make this variable named string1 and this variable named string2. So you can see my string is encapsulated in double quotes here. Now I'll type in a sentence, Joe's Kitchen. But let's say I want to have the apostrophe here, or the quote mark, the single quote, where it belongs. That will work just fine because I have this encapsulated in double quotes. But what if I was to take that same sentence and put it in string variable 2 and encapsulate that string using single quotes? You'll see what happens is I get a broken string because where my single quote happens again in the string is where it's going to end that string. So if I want that string to continue on nicely without any syntax problems, I will put a backslash in front of that single quote and it will output exactly like this string above. The same goes for double quotes. For instance, if I want to put double quotes around the word kitchen like this, you can see I just broke my string. So what I have to do since my string is encapsulated by double quotes is I have to escape any double quotes that I want to display in the string. So I'll put an escape there and a backslash there as well. And then I have no syntax problems. Now PHP also ignores white space, so any white space that happens to be within your PHP tag, the PHP processing engine will ignore that white space. Meaning if I have a setup just like this, it'll run just as fast as if I have a setup like this. So you can see that I can just tack things all end to end there and my script will run exactly the same as it would have before. The only difference now is that I have a smaller file size. This is called minified code. And actually it would be more properly minified if I do this. That's as minified as that code can get. And it will have a smaller byte size than the code would have if you had it all spread out on the page with new lines and white space everywhere. And you might even run across people having this debate online. And you can just tell them it won't make your PHP run any faster. What it does is it serves up a smaller file size. And this is why you see a lot of JavaScript programs being minified. It's not so much that everything processes faster, it's just that you're serving up much smaller file sizes, especially when you get a lot of code in your scripts. When you take out all the white space and the new lines, it has a much smaller file size. There's no debating that argument. But as far as the processing speed is concerned, this should run just as fast as this and then you can put your white space back in here. And especially if you're trying to teach code or demonstrate or show your code to someone that you want to have them read and understand, you would want to have new lines and some white space in there because it's easier on the eyes. Okay, the last little topic we'll discuss about the PHP syntax rules and guidelines is the reserved words in PHP. And I'll have all of these lists that you see here directly under the video where it displays on my site and I'll give you guys links to that page. It'll have all the code examples too. Now you should not use the following PHP language constructs as your function names, constant names, class names, or your method names. Because these reserved words perform special operations built into PHP or they have special significant values just by default. So you don't want to create any unnecessary conflicts. So it's good to study these lists. And I have it all packed into one page here so you can get to it all in one spot. And it works the same way in JavaScript and any other popular programming language. They're going to have reserved words and keywords that you should avoid using in your function names and such. Okay, so hopefully that helps you avoid some issues.
and helps you understand some of the characters that you see in place within PHP scripts and what their purpose is.